and we're back. Yeah, so I thought, uh, so happy to have so many people here, and I'm uh, kind of wondering how we're gonna be able to filter all of these questions out or, or comments out because this, the the there is a function. Just so you're aware, um, Oscar, there I think there's a function. Maybe you should turn it on but in the mods there is something where you can put on something called a slow-mo uh, some slow motion chat or something like that if there uh, if, if it's needed but I'm hoping that you can hey Gail uh, I'm hoping that you Oscar can try and bring out some questions and stuff like that during the game that you might poke me about or something like that I also have the slack up um, uh, so I can see if you're writing anything to me here and please join in Oscar and help out with things I'm gonna try and, and, and play this game I don't know if we're gonna finish today it's gonna be a fairly long stream I'm I'm thinking like the rest of the work day here so we'll see how far we get uh, yeah uh, yeah so but uh, let's see interest is so high so happy about that it's gonna be fun playing this through it's going up on on uh, frictionals youtube later on so i'll try and repeat all of the questions because we don't want to have the the chat on screen uh, so so on youtube the the chat won't be visible so i'm going to just uh, try and uh, uh, repeat all of the questions that we want to answer during this stream um, and yeah uh, so we can start talking about Amnesia Rebirth, released in October 2020 on most platforms. Um, that was uh, uh, a project where, just just so you're aware, uh, since I'm the one sitting here on the camera and talking, I was uh, the creative lead on that project, but not from the start. Uh, so I came in as a as an executive producer, and I started off like handling most of the producing part so a lot of sheets and stuff like that not sheets like in sheeting but uh, sheets like in excel uh, sheets and planning and those kind of things but halfway through or maybe a little bit earlier than halfway through we had the we had this moment where we felt we we everyone felt so it was a, a not a difficult decision in any way but we had to kind of change it up a bit and we had to uh, change the um the initial like the the creative lead role and then the the, the role fell on to me um so i took it over so there's parts of this that i don't know how it came to be. If it's something early in the process, I wasn't like listening in from a creative lead point of view. I was more regarding planning and those kind of things uh, as a producer. So, uh, so the story, how it came to be, it was fairly set when I came uh, on board and those kind of things. So, um, yeah. Uh, but I will try and like bring as much to this dev commentary as possible. But you should know that that. There's certain things that I don't know. Also worth knowing that this <laughs> this game, um, I haven't played it in years now. So I might actually for, have forgotten certain things in how to play it and things like that. But uh, it's going to be super fun. Some more people in the chat. Um, hey, Paravos Bendos. Uh, hi, Stanor. Welcome. Um, and no, I haven't played Alien Isolation. Uh, I started it up. I played for a few minutes, and uh, and no, Thomas uh, Grip was not uh, creative lead uh, before me. He was on a different project that's been ongoing for uh, quite some time. So um, uh, man, the questions are just uh, running here. <laughs> yeah. Oscar, Oscar, I, I didn't really expect, like, we have 70 viewers now. That's so high. I did not expect that. I'm super happy. We are super happy about that. But we'll try and make the best out of the situation now because the chat is rolling. Hello, Cremtastic. Um, uh, AX areas. Uh, so, so what we will try and do, Oscar will try and bring out the questions 
and send them on the side here to to me on on slack and i'll see if i can do this there's like three screens i need to uh, handle while playing the game so <laughs> it's gonna be super interesting to see how it goes um yeah and also oscar will try and answer a few questions like the one uh, now um uh, that you that you answered uh, some of the easy like not the easy answers but some of the answers that might not be the obvious ones to take up in a in a rebirth chat uh, we'll try and focus on rebirth for this one maybe we should do more uh, of that other um, stuff later on um Oh, cool, Dave. Yeah, welcome, Dave. And uh, yeah, oh, still people coming through the door. What did, where did anyone post? This is just, yeah, it's cool. It's super cool. Um, but I think we should get going because we don't have all day, right? Um, so I don't think we should do a continue because that's going to bring me to the end of the game. I can see that on the screen. There's quite a lot of these uh, things here. Let's let's switch over to and start this up. Let's start a new game. Um, <laughs> listening to the scream. Hi, Sino. Welcome. Oh, Sino, weren't you the one asking earlier if you should play Rebirth or not? So maybe you should be here. Uh... <laughs> Uh, you're there's someone I remember saying like uh, in my like I have my my own hobby stream on this channel so I have a few followers that are following me very constantly I'm super happy about that it's helped me get like find my way back to playing games I've been playing Dishonored and Prey and stuff like that so but so some of the people in the chat now are my kind of my original gang and we know each other a bit so like you know where uh, i think you were saying that asking if, if rebirth was a game to play for you so you should probably ah, okay you don't mind spoilers uh so but okay let's see we're gonna play that the original mode we're not playing the adventure mode today but there is as you know an adventure mode also an interesting thing i mean adventure mode was released after uh, the release of the game. It, what we've done, I think you've seen it throughout. What we did with Soma, we released something called a safe mode. There we felt like the game has this very strong theme. Uh, so we wanted people to be able to actually, like like philosophical theme, and we wanted players to be able to, to experience that without having to like, worry about the monsters some people might not be able to play horror games in that sense where monster encounters is the main thing and and soma has both of those things but we felt for, for that game the what was most suitable for it was to bring on that safe mode so that people can actually just play the narrative so to say but with uh, amnesia the dark descent Fairly soon after that, we re after we released the safe mode for Soma, we released uh, for the Dark Descent, we released a hard mode because there we felt that was the thing you should do. You should have an even more difficult time with that game. And then, of course, Rebirth came along and Rebirth is more, I'd say, a, a, an adventurous horror game than it is a, a challenging game game like bunker for example which is our latest one uh, so we introduced an adventure mode um, and then for bunker as many i hope many of you know for bunker amnesia the bunker we had like went all the way like everything we have easy mode we have shell shocked super hard difficulty we have custom mode where you can customize your own playthrough so that's a game where the challenge is really the core of it. So we try to do what we feel is the is the thing to do with um, uh, with these games. Let's see. We have some questions here. Uh, Gordon, uh, Lovecraft was still a major inspiration for Rebirth, right? Yes, I would say so. Um, uh, this is actually one of the places where I mean, the Amnesia universe is inspired by. Lovecraftian <laughs> inspiration so definitely yes I, I would say so and then maybe you can say that Amnesia the Bunker has left less of that uh, but uh, but um, Rebirth has a lot of it 
uh, from uh, Amr Blue. I actually have a question. I saw many concepts for different enemies, like a sand lurker. I want to ask why were there only three monsters, including the shadow? Yeah. Um, so I'm wondering if we should. Yeah, the sand lurker was there. There were like there was some issues during this game when it came to the we really wanted the desert vibe we wanted this open environment this time around to see what we could do with that uh, but we realized quite soon that if you can see really far it's super difficult to make horror encounters for example you gotta see some a dot over there and go like okay there's something coming on the horizon so i mean <laughs> what we did then was try and look at can we have something with a sand lurk or something going beneath the the sand but then and we tried it out i think we even had a prototype for it where you had to stand on rocks it became almost similar to the water lurker in that sense but it just the the narrative and you can sense that from this game the narrative and the story has the driving seat for this game so it's very it was super difficult to change things around for gameplay reasons we had to have this kind of linear path that you followed um oh thank you pablo pirakicic uh thank you very much for the sub for gift for the gifts um um so uh you almost made dune in the process yeah, yeah. sandworms yeah it was fairly similar to that of course um but um yeah so the the monsters we have of course you'll see it when we play it through but there is a strong focus on the on the ghoul it's anchored into the story it's anchored into the player journey as well so the ghoul is a very strong like it has to be here for that uh, reason um but then we have of course the uh, yeah let's not get ahead of ourselves maybe uh let's instead uh, actually i think we can talk about things like this after we experience them don't you agree oscar i think maybe we'll we'll try and not because otherwise it's going to be almost like like spoiling certain things um singing mode uh, yeah, uh, <laughs> let's not talk about sing mode it's it's one of the one of the pains of my hobby I, I managed to turn a sing mode on kind of like by mistake I was just turning on buttons on twitch and all of a sudden the, the chat got to got hold of that sing mode and started to trigger it as soon as possible which meant i had to sing everything i wanted to say for like five or ten minutes so so i turned it off but they brought it back by some kind of community challenge and now it's back but for this stream i've turned everything off because i don't want to do that and i'm super happy about that because the viewer count is like 87 that's not my usual stream amount the amount of viewers so um I bet not many frictional fans heard your singing. <laughs> no, and they should be happy about that. I think uh, it's painful, but it seems like chat wanna wa like like the pain. So, guys, there's a lot of messages going on. Um, let's let's go and and start the game. Um, if I'm missing out on any of the the questions, it's not because I don't want to like answer everything. It's uh, it's um, uh, difficult to uh, to hang to follow the whole chat, and that's why Oscar is here to pull out the goodies. Hopefully, uh, okay. Let's get to the game. Let's have the intro sequence. The game should not be played to win. Immerse yourself in the world and the story. Very fear and darkness are your enemies. Very different approach, by the way, to bunker, for example, which is kind of supposed to be played to win. Um, you can say because of the challenge. There is a moment when you realize what the pain has made of you. Let me know if audio is good, by the way. 
able to show the world your face. Acting on instinct. Lashing out. Even at those closest to you. Time has passed. Okay, I'll, I'm gonna check. Uh, it might be actually that I've brought this down when I was playing a mod earlier for this. Let's see, audio. Oh yeah, 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 it's very low. Uh, did that save? <laughs> we gotta check, yeah, it saved. So, back. And time is a thief. Better? It has stolen your memories. The agony has faded, but so has every precious moment of joy. You have been hollowed out from the inside. And there's nothing left of the person you used to be. But you try. You try to remember how to smile. You try to remember how to love. And one day you crawl out from your hiding place and step back into the world. And then, every day, you do what you must to survive. Yeah, so uh, definitely I agree. Alex Wilton Regan. Working with her on this, such a fantastic voice actor, so good uh, and so easy to work with. And with her, like she has a part French, part uh, English background, so she had it was super easy for her to to do the French accent, and it sounded really good. So it's 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 just can't send enough love to Alex for for uh, her work on this game. Nothing. Don't worry. Pretending it's not there won't make it go away. Ah! Salim, it's just turbulence. It'll settle down soon. Yes, yes, I know. It's hard though. Your head tells you one thing, but your heart disagrees. Try to sleep. I couldn't. I keep imagining what might go wrong. I know someone who can help you. And who's that? Marka. Oh, I had no idea you brought him. I didn't want him to be lonely. I know, my heart. It's good for him to have an adventure, but he'll be glad when this journey's over, I think. He's had a hard life. And there's so much more to come. Alex? Yeah, oh. 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 Yasmin, get up here! Hello. Hello, this is Yasmin Sartre, I'm from Algiers. Can anyone read me? Mayday! Uh. Mayday!
Okay, I think we can... Uh, I, I'm gonna do a bit of pausing here because this is the dev commentary after all. So, first of all, we had... This was... Uh, uh, just want to say, this was one of the big drama regarding the release. Uh, with those uh, fear flashes that we call them that you saw, where you saw these <laughs> images uh, punching the, the screen. Uh, they were even stronger uh, implemented in the beginning. Uh, and Maybe not these specific, the first ones, but the ones coming later on. They were People were angry with us because they were saying these are sheep uh, jump scares. Uh, <laughs> and then we went and uh, nerfed them. Yeah, Geo. Uh, we nerfed them down. But for us, it was never. We don't. We don't do <laughs> jump scares. To be honest, the the reason we had them is in was to actually the player should be scared of these moments where they were low on on when the fa fear was high. So to, to really tell them you're about to collapse into, yeah, we'll get to that later on, but you're about to collapse and, and succumb to this fear. Uh, and we wanted people to really see those. And, and we used those, uh, the, those flare fa fear flashes. And we did not realize that they would come through as sheep uh, uh, jump scares. But after watching some of the initial playthroughs of people on, on like Let's Plays and stuff like that, we could see people getting scared every time. It was like they got a, a punch in the face. And we did not realize that. That's super interesting because we were like used to the game. We're understanding how how these things were uh, were, were working. And, and uh, so it was just an easy choice to bring them back down. But uh, the, the kind of damage was already done i mean it wasn't a big thing people were a bit frustrated with them early on but we went out fairly soon and and, uh, and decreased them and so yeah that's one of the big drama things that happened uh, during <laughs> release um but i think it's probably the biggest one there was uh, the one that and then we saw people just saying <laughs> Oh, bring down those those sheep jump scares and then other people. But can't you see it's part of the gameplay? It's supposed to make you not want to be in that that much fear and uh, keep them in. But we we fell for it. So um, um, yeah, let's see. We had some questions. Puresh one: Is there a lore reason three out of five amnesia protagonists are French? No, there is not. Not as far as I know. I, as I was mentioning in the beginning of this stream, um, the I wasn't here for the start, so I don't know how the discussions went re regarding the uh, when people were actually when we were writing the story and all of that. So I do not know. For Bunker, I think it was more of a like. Uh, Actually, to start with, we just felt like if we do it French, we can reuse certain aspects of, of the previous stuff. And we made Bunker in a very short time, uh, short amount of time. So, uh, hey, Baldoro, good to have you here. Um, so, so I think it was more of a practical thing when it came to, to have it in a French Bunker. Uh, so, no, there's no lore connection like for that reason to, to France. Um, Sometimes the answer is it's not what you want it to be. It could also be like just for practical reasons at certain points. Let's see. Big Dandy Twenty One asks, "How do you go about balancing the horror elements between the puzzle adventure elements in a game like this? Um, and are you gonna play through the entire game?" Yes, I was planning on doing that, but I start to realize that it's not gonna happen today. <laughs> Because if I'm stopping like this, and if we have this many people asking questions, then no, uh, I won't make it today. But then we should just break in, let's say, for four hours from now. So I'm open to that. So everyone who want to stay for that is it's welcome. Um, but then, uh, then uh, the we will probably continue tomorrow, a similar time, and play the last pieces of it um uh, let's see uh, so many new first time shatters welcome everyone scribe the uh, lead pencil and everyone yeah um so 
I will continue for a while. You can start gathering questions, uh, Oscar, and we'll see. Um, highlight my message we got here. Do you know if custom story support will ever be added for consoles like PlayStation? I very much doubt it, to be on. To be honest, Lee Pencil, it's so much work in doing that. So we would love to, but it's simply not something we have the resources to do. And we kind of now switched over to to work on on the the next coming games. Welcome, whatever M4N. Oh, nice to hear. So much love going on in the chat, right? <laughs> Super nice. Um, and um, yeah, if you can't watch it live, you can watch it on Frictional's YouTube later on. We'll upload these VODs and also on, I will probably upload these VODs here on my uh, on my Twitch account as well as immediately after this. So, but let's get back into the game. Let me know if... if Actually, audio a bit a bit high now from the game. Let me know if that's the case. Don't Don't lose it's all good. Okay, cool. Hang on, I'm actually in too much of a bright space to to do it with this low amount of gamma. Sorry, guys. Maybe you'll see a bit better as well. It's for once it's sunny here. So. I, I have laudanum. It will help, but you must try to keep calm, or it will get worse. Do not allow yourself anger. Do not allow yourself to fear. You understand me, Tassi? So, uh, solves everything you know guys <laughs> so a couple of more questions coming in um zoziel i think was the one yeah zoziel uh, frederick did the design of the wraith change from the first teaser trailer to the final design Oof, sorry i i actually don't remember uh what it looked like in the first teaser trailer but I'm expecting that there might be a difference, to be honest. Uh, I mean, we constantly... But the teaser trailer, was there... An, the teaser trailer was... Uh, I can't remember now. It's such a long time. Sorry, I don't know if that's actually in between those, if there's any change. Um, but most likely, yeah. Mm. Oh, yeah, yeah. Did I forget to answer that one? <laughs> Sorry <laughs> about balancing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, okay. I'm, I, this is a bit overwhelming, guys. I'll try and answer everything as best I can. But about balancing horror and puzzle adventure. I mean, it's it, it goes with... Um, when you do that, you just need to to envision the player state. What, what, uh, what are the player... Uh, currently in which state are they currently uh, and make sure that for the puzzle elements i mean put bunker aside i think if we're looking at 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 rebirth which i work i can't really speak for soma or amnesia the dark descent since i was not involved in those but for rebirth it's it was a matter of of pacing really it, it is pacing you 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 also don't want for these type of games, the linear ones, uh, the more linear ones, you don't want the horror and the adventure to happen at the same time. Sorry, the horror and the puzzle solving happen at the same time. Whereas in Bunker, for example, that's uh, what's supposed to happen. You are solving puzzles and shit hits the fan and you 
you get hunted by the uh, by the stalker and those kind of things. So that's a different. That it's the core of the gameplay basically that you are trying to solve things and and, um, and uh, get interrupted. But for these type of games, you want to kind of give the player a breathing room. Uh, and I think it's just a matter of when you design it, you you, you as a, a design, designer need to envision. Uh, at what pacing you want the player to be in and where will they be at this certain point in time with their mindset, basically. Um, uh, yeah, Bunker was different. <laughs> Let's see, a uh, long question here. Uh, hey there, story theme question. I know this takes place in colonial Fantastic expedition has something to do with the mining operation that there are some themes around the empire imperial but i wanted to ask how much research was done on subject like colonialism and uh, the story and how much did frictional intend for that to be a major theme or is the commentary about empires more incidental i wouldn't like to reply to that question because i don't know uh, it's also part of what was already set so i wasn't part of the initial dialogues uh, when it came to the the, the the main strokes of the of the story so i'm sorry about that it's it's something we would have asked our writer if uh, ian who was uh, if he was still here and i i think um uh <laughs> it's overwhelming to everyone else as well so so i'm sorry about that uh, scribed um the, I'm, I'm sorry about that i don't know how we, how you want to play it uh that's how we do it uh can we send our questions to frictional oscar and then he can send them to you yeah that's how we do it so i'm i'm reading uh slack at the same time here um uh, Stanor, was the desert going to be a more important part of the game? I think there was heat management at one point and a sandworm enemy. Yeah. So I was saying actually in the beginning of this stream uh, that we wanted, we really wanted the desert. We wanted an approach where the game, all of, all of our previous games have been very confined to tight spaces. And we wanted to try and bring out a more open environment. And that became, for many reasons, I mean, difficult to make horror in that. I was doing the example of let's have a monster attack you or you're an encounter and you see it and you go like, there's a dot over there on the horizon. He's probably going to get here in like half an hour or something. And then, uh, then I'll just <laughs> avoid him when that happens. So we tried different approaches, heat management. We had water, thought about like bringing on board water, finding water, but it's also like, uh, yeah, we kind of cut some of those ideas away, heat management as well, and the sandworm. And also, yeah, so uh, focused on the areas that again became the tight and closed encounter uh, environments. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> Answering from the chat will keep you talking for hours. Yes. And we don't want that. I'm already losing my voice. You can hear that. Uh, let's let's uh, try and keep some kind of pace here as well. But I will try and solve uh, and, and answer as many questions as, as we can with the help of Oscar. So we took the laudanum, which means we are kind of uh, in a nice place now compared to a minute ago. And here we have some some of the famous uh, um, reminders. No, the memories. I have to remember. She will die. Find Salim. And now I don't think we should we should try and avoid spoilers this early on. I mean, we can go back to these memories later on and see what they kind of meant. Uh, but I think for most people who play the game, they looking at this might have a different view of what this means than um, uh, than than the people seeing it for the first time. Um, yeah. My, my handwriting, I don't remember. So we wake up with amnesia, of course, and we have no clue what's been going on over the past few. Uh, Doctor, 
hours. That's, that's the doctor. I'm here. I'm here. I personally absolutely love this environment, by the way. <laughs> Hello? Hello? This is Tazzy? Shit, it's broken. Also this, we can't fly away from here. If this only was working, we could have left a long time ago. Maybe not. Okay, can't open that. But luckily, just there. So here we can see memories. No, sorry, reminders. This is a reminder. We have memories as well of us getting this uh, laudanum from the doctor. We have memories of us drawing this, uh, this painting earlier. And then we have all of the memories that we actually saw during the intro, during before we ended up experiencing the crash. So here we have all of the different characters of the of the game actually named as well. So it's easier to keep track of who is who. Um, yeah. Uh, let's go. Let's get out of here. Actually, this is perfect because I'm sitting in my office with every door closed and the sun is just heating this office up. So I'm feeling the desert heat right now. That's perfect, you know. <laughs> help! For God's sake, help me! People were hurt in the crash. I was here, I think. Where did they go? Where's Salim? So I think this is a good time to, to actually just quickly... Um, uh, just quickly go over a quick thing about Tassi as the protagonist and being a talkative one. Because she's much more talkative than, for example, Daniel in uh, uh, in The Dark Descent. Uh, Simon was a bit more talkative uh, as well in Soma. In Bunker, for those of you who have played, Henri is not saying a word. Um, so I think for this game, if you go into this game with the mindset that we wanted you to have as a player at least then the talkative protagonist is an important part of the core experience um because it's it's not really like Henri Henri's journey is more like your journey in the bunker it's what you experience with the stalker and stuff like that but we can't do that with this kind of a game because we have something else connected to you for those of you who know we're going to see the spoiler soon there's a we can say this I think for this dev commentary you are pregnant for example and we wanted to see if we could actually attach a player to something to a companion that they brought with them that they couldn't see that some and that is the baby and in a way we needed Tassi to be the vessel and the communicator between the player and the baby for that reason whenever you talk to the belly you talk to the the the, uh, the baby in your in your belly that became this connection and hopefully we could create this connection between you uh, and uh, the player and this uh, unseen um, companion that you had with you and also Tassi's voice is therefore important um yeah let's go so as you can see it's a bit blurry the heat is getting to me you can hear the famous crackling noise 
I'm so happy we got uh, footsteps in as well for this. You can sit here and get the oh, crackling sound away. You're not frying in the sun anymore. But as soon as you, as soon as you start getting up. But there's no real gameplay in this. It's just let's call it flavor. Wait, thank you. But we've no choice. We need to get them to shelter. I know. It's Selim. He's hurt. You know what he's like. Let's get him down there, then you and I can sit on him while the doc takes a look. Don't worry. The caves aren't far. So this is Hank. He was the leader of the team. Um, nice, nice, friendly person, as far as we know. Uh, yeah, let's go. I need to remember the controls now as well. This is beautiful, right? Could leave here. Gordon, the crackling noise reminded me of the crackling noise from The Dark Descent, I think you mean ADD, yeah. Or? Uh, what can you tell about it? What, uh, uh, what is it supposed to be? Something in the mind? I know people said that it could be the sound of clenching teeth in ADD. Yeah, I don't know if we, if we know and if we know if we want to say. <laughs> I mean, it's there to represent you not feeling well uh, in uh, the dark descent it's representing your sanity uh getting drained uh, in um, in rebirth it represents the uh, your fear increasing so yeah uh, what it is um if it's clenching teeth or whatever that i wouldn't really no. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, maybe there was an original idea for the Dark Descent, to be honest. And but I wouldn't know. Uh, it's for us. It was like a nice thing to reuse here in Rebirth. Uh, but of course, we don't have sanity in the same way. We have fear. Uh, but it it's pretty similar. What is this? I would like to have that with me. Could be super important. Was that a COVID mask? Let's not start with COVID talks here. Yeah, teeth shattering, yeah. Thanks, TSWJ. Welcome to the chat. And thank you for the love. Oh, oh there is a cave. Oh, thank God. All your homies hate Leon. It's just misunderstood. Dearest Susan. Dearest Alfie. Jonathan. Stories don't do this place justice. It is amazing. You've never seen anywhere as busy as the market in Algiers. The smells, the flavours, the colours, and oh, the noise. I may have picked you both up a little something. You never know your luck. All my love, always. Dan. 
so happy with the voice acting we got for this game, to be honest. There's not one that I feel is bad. <laughs> and I love them all. Um, let's jump in. Oh, Tazi, look at the hands. Such tiny, perfect fingers. <laughs> Hello, hello, my little one. And these loading screens, then, uh, if we look at those, they are also a way of like telling more about where Tassi comes from. So it's kind of like a parallel timeline. That's maybe wrong. It's a past timeline that you get to experience through the loading screens. And I, all of these together, this, the memories that you get back, uh, the flashbacks that you get as you progress, um, the way you talk to the to your unborn baby, all of these things are like what we wanted to see if we could accomplish with this, what I was talking about earlier, how to connect, um, how we could connect these, uh, the player with the baby and put them in this situation to make some horrible choices in the end and those kind of things. So let's continue. Yeah, they are heartbreaking. I remember seeing them the first time in game. I was. It's all right. I can manage. Come on. I kind of have a, had a tear now. in my eye. Some of them are really Hello? painful. Is anyone there? Salim. It's one of my. I think one of my favorite shots of the whole game. Love this. Hold him more tightly or the stitching will tear. I... Oh, I'm sorry. I will be still. Salim, I have you. I have you. So now we start to realize that Salim is injured. This is us. Salim and me. I brought this here. <laughs> Salim, the type of husband that, to eat all the yogurt in your fridge, yeah. What is it? I... I had something to say to you whole speech, something poetic, but... You don't need to say anything. I know, it's just... <laughs> I never thought this would happen. Any of this. You and me, I would never have imagined this. Selim, there is no one I would rather spend my time with. Really? <laughs> really? Stop worrying, I'm in love with you, you idiot. <sighs> you are my heart, Desi Triano. <laughs> Said no poetry. <laughs> so, such a po poet. Um, question from Nightcore 4. You will play the old Amnesia too? I don't know. Haven't planned on doing it, but I mean, if there's interest, then maybe we should do it. Haven't played that uh, so much, actually. So, <laughs> that's almost... I think by now it's almost going to be like... So here comes a certain aspect like our first gameplay thingy. So now we have matches. We have three of them. And one of the things people complain about is only 10 ma <laughs> matchsticks. Well, that was a balancing act for us. We had to keep it down. If you could have had uh, more than 10, then um, yeah, it would be difficult to balance the game. Uh, let's see. A map. This is where we were heading. Uh, there you can see that we were the draftsman engineer was Jonathan, the one who wrote the letter outside. Uh, yeah, the project we were heading on. Here we get introduced to a few more characters, I think. Alex and Richard, 
you can see they are they seem to be really happy with each other when i can't i won't stay here there's something in the tunnels i swear it. you won't be staying you'll be with us and i'll take care of you come here Yeah, the Soma one that would be for for Thomas to to play through, and I think maybe also if if he wanted to do that. Um, uh, small interesting thing, I don't know if you know, but you just heard Richard's voice there, and I'm like super happy we got. It's fairly small role, but it's actually the the main actor for Dirk Gently's. Um, so his name is. Let's see, Samuel Barnett uh, playing Dirk Yantley in Dirk Yantley's uh, holistic uh, detective agency, <laughs> whatever it's called. So, yeah. Um. I think he does a really good job with uh, Richard, even though it's, it's such a small... My darling Amanda, by now you'll know about the crash, and you'll know that our situation is a bit sticky. We're off for a walk through the desert to see if we can find a radio or a village or some other sort of help. Everyone's putting a brave face on it, but no one really knows what's going to happen. So maybe this is it. Maybe this is the last you'll hear. If it is, I'm sorry my love. I I suppose it's my fault for wanting a big adventure. I should have stayed home after all. Please tell them both that I love them. Tell Susan that she's the best girl in the world. And tell Alfie to look after his sister. <sighs> now I'm sitting here with tears in my eyes and my hands are trembling and uh, I just don't know what to write. I don't know how to say goodbye. I can't believe this is goodbye. I love you, my darling girl. I know in my heart we'll see each other again. Even if it's not in this life. You're Jonathan. Yeah, so as you can see, the situation is pretty, pretty bad for this, for this gang. That's kind of what you're realizing here. And here we have Jasmine Chabani. Gonna get a flashback of her now. Working for the Sterling Company. What a beautiful girl. Is that your daughter? Yes. <laughs> My father keeps nagging me for grandchildren. <laughs> Did you leave her in Paris? Yes. Is she with her grand... Yasmin, I'd like to check the Sadiola samples are packed up. Give me a hand. Of course, Mr. Mitchell. Uh, sorry, Hank. So also worth mentioning what we took here in the game, so all of the notes you find you can read here, but also the memories, you can actually see all of these memories before opening them up. Uh, so like, you could go through and think about, okay, what's this? When am I going to encounter this? When, am, when is this going to get clearer? So. And you can also check the loading screens, all of them here. So we gave like all of the content for the backstory and uh, it's, it's all in here for you to digest when you have the time, so to say. Uh, I picked, yeah, I picked that up. this actually if you bring this car uh, with you to the end of the game you're gonna actually have a fourth uh, secret ending no i'm just kidding man some people just flipped out when i did that right <laughs> 
That would be fun. We should have had that. But you, our lovely modding community would actually would actually be able to tell. There's no secrets. We can't can't keep any secrets. I love this mug, by the way. It's was not on the surface, but let's let's go here. There's a lot of notes in the beginning. It's the setup of the game, basically. It's um, and then we have these Anastasi Trianon. Then we have these kind of notes telling you more about each character that you can find throughout okay. the game and giving I you a certain. Bring this up again, but I know this won't be easy on you. First time out again, you know. So if you want a break. You want to get away from people, any of that. Just say whatever you need. Portable radio transmitter, rope, rifles, lantern boxes. So you know three rifles, Malik, Mitchell and Debris have them. And here you can also see the crew and who's died. Rachel Holt, Nicholas Mazon, the pilot, died. Um, yeah. Where did they all go? Man. I cannot bear it. The rest of you? This is not Salim's fault. I am of sound mind. Eva written. So Eva took her life because Lucas, who is buried here, died? I know him. Oh, Lucas, I think. Let's see, we have another question uh, from Kolko's chairman. Uh, greetings Mr. Olson. I always felt like this game had a pretty troubled development with a lot of drastic changes in the middle of its production. If I remember correctly, Mr. Grip once mentioned that you replaced him on the creative lead position late in development. Is this true? And if yes, then how many things did you have to redo from scratch and how much was the very idea of the game itself changed since its initial conception. So first of all, no, I did not. Um, I did not replace Thomas Grip on this. Uh, he was not working on this project. So it was a completely new team. This was the first project we attempted to run as a two-project studio. So for us, it's kind of interesting, I guess, uh, as a studio, a small studio, working on one project with like. 30 people on the on the team basically we have our own engine and working on one project going from pre-production and deciding what the game will be and then after that production that's when everyone can be involved in everything having 30 people working on pre-production is going to be a mess it's unheard of it's not happening there needs to be a small amount of people working on a smaller amount of people working on the pre-production uh, of a game so for us it was important to try and get like the game into having two tracks where we always had one game in pre-production and one game in in production so that once this little team uh, so if we have one game in pre-production one game in, in production and then this uh 
the production finished on one of the games, then we could take everyone, like 25 people working on production there, move them over to this project and start production over there. And then another project could start in pre-production while they are most of the team is working on, uh, on production of that. And Rebirth was the first game to come out in that process, which meant that Thomas, who had been creative lead on Soma and issued The Dark Descent, he started up one project and then uh, this uh, gang we put together a whole new team to work on with a new type of organization to work on on rebirth so it was the first time for many of the people in the leads team for example to work in these roles and uh, yeah just just very different from that perspective uh, so thomas was not creative lead in in that there was a, another guy who was part of that who then wanted to take a more of a backseat halfway through and then I came into that uh, role there and I what I had to redo I mean certain things was already set and you couldn't go back uh, yeah it was a learning experience for us all definitely um, uh, <laughs> I'll let Thomas answer the questions about his project later on uh, at, at some point I mean um, but so with regards to the second question in your big question there, um, I guess it's, uh, I didn't like from a creative lead perspective, redo much. I mean, a lot of it was set, but we couldn't really find maybe the core of the game from a gameplay perspective and these kind of things. So, but since we had all of the levels planned out, the story, the story beats, everything like that, that was the driver. So you couldn't go in and meddle with that. Instead, you had to look at what can we do within those constraints. And that's where I came in then. We started focusing on certain aspects that you will see later on when we play this through, but there are certain th things like, I, I was talking to the team about buckets. We need to define buckets instead of key core pillars of the game. We had core buckets. People made fun of me of, of those things. But for example, we had this baby bucket or the pregnancy bucket. We had the, uh, uh, we had the torture bucket. So we wanted to fill all of these, but we had a monster bucket like you turning into a monster and things like that and we had to fill them up to the brim to start and look of course do it in a clever way but we always talked about these buckets needed to be filled um, fill the baby bucket folk yeah folks yeah that, that's so so uh, uh, we started looking at that and then we started looking at things like maybe switching around certain aspects of the game I know for example the birth of the baby was supposed to happen at the very end but we moved that up and so those kind of things i've been involved in in but it's it's not fundamental changes in that same way uh, this is a bucket yeah i even got from Ian, the writer, when he arrived from the UK for a meetup, he had with him small, two small buckets that he gave, gave to me as a present where I could put flowers in and stuff like that. So, yeah. Okay. Let's head into the caves, I think. Actually, now it's getting a bit darker here, so I'm just going to staring into a light like that is not doing wonders for my ability to see to those who follow i am salim hanachi i crashed with the crew of the cassandra on march 3rd 1937 i and others were injured we stayed while the rest of the crew went for help my companions are dead now and the radio is broken I cannot wait alone. There is some sort of creature here. I must go after the crew as best I can. They followed the path through the mountain. I will leave signs. Tazi, if I do not find you, and by some chance you are reading this, know that you are my heart. Why couldn't you wait? I'll find you. I promise. Yeah, 
yeah, Baldoro, I very much doubt that uh, that my bucket theory or bucket uh, system will be uh, changing any game industry. Uh, but I think there's one point, like sometimes when you talk like from a lead perspective, you need to communicate sometimes in a more... If you do too much theory, like co co talking about core pillars and things like that i kind of feel like sometimes you need to make use of what what you can how you can describe and make a call for action for the team so filling a bucket is easier than than uh, to think about like in how can we fill this bucket so when doing level design oh here we can actually if we add this thing here we're putting a bit more into the torture bucket or whatever instead of saying we have core pillars with we, we, becomes much more abstract and less a call for action. So I think whatever people f find as ways to to use that in their communication, I think is good. And and for me, it felt like felt like when coming into this project, I used buckets as the idea. I didn't talk about bucket during the bunker <laughs> development at all, by the way. But yeah, uh, yeah, let's continue. So now the. So this is a dead end, but now we are actually starting with the gameplay aspect. So standing in this, when the when the when your dark uh, what's it called night vision, when night vision kicks in, that's when you're in darkness, and that means your fear is increasing. So we're heading after Salim now. I Monsieur Esperandio at the market, but he has no more work until next week. I know that Tazi has savings, and I know that something will come, but it is hard. It is not just two of us now. I want to know that I'm keeping them safe. Uh, so this is just him ripping out small pieces of his uh, diary and placing them as tracks for Tazi to find him. Um, this is... Did we have any more questions? Uh, Rexer Gaming Z. Have I, uh, I have one quick question about the bunker. Was the sanity system considered for it, or it was always decided not to have it? Actually, from the from the beginning, uh, it was kind of something. Since I was the one pitching the idea and everything, the generator was part of the original pitch for this game uh, the idea the vision for this game and the generator is in my opinion the thing that is substituting the sanity system and i was kind of feeling like we can do without the sanity system this time and play on something that actually have an like an actual tactile effect on the player so now we're talking bunker maybe that's not the right thing but it, okay the question is related in some way um so so when you because bunker then instead of us having this thing that it's a bit abstract like fear or sanity system we have something like the generator that um uh, when it has the same effect in a way because you, if you sit and wait out the monster the stalker for example in the bunker that means you're sitting in darkness probably and that's going to give you in one of these games it's going to give you the sanity or fear increase whereas there it's the generator that's burning and when it dies it gives you this kind of actual effect where you all of a sudden need to walk around in darkness use the flashlight the stalker is much more out roaming so no there there of course it's been brought up but it's kind of like just been mentioned like should we bring in a sense no it's not for this game and i think what we actually thought about maybe adding a sanity system as a fun thing for a post release thing but it never felt like it really was supposed to be in the bunker game so it's much more suitable for the previous games but for that one we had the generator i hope that answers your your question 
yeah, there's a stream of messages, but but Oscar is helping out with uh, with pulling things out and and I'm trying to answer those. I think that's the best system. Otherwise, I'll, you just see me sitting here reading the chat and trying to find out. Um, yeah. I'm not sure this is the best idea. So now, as you could hear, the heartbeat was increasing as I was in darkness. And if I let it go for too long, we're going to start seeing those fear flashes that we were talking about. But standing here is, uh, yeah, is basically okay, apart from these little buggers that I can scare away, but oh, obviously not. Sorry guys, I need to increase <laughs> I need to increase the gamma. This is not because the game, I guess it's dark. It's what we do with our games, but at the same time it's uh, very bright in my room here. Only I had a lantern or oh, something. Right? This also kind of makes it a, a, a way for us to track our progress by doing this. Also, moving too quickly with a, with a match actually makes it die faster. Uh, there was a note. Let's see. It's one of those Salim left behind. She's sleeping now. Maybe dreaming, curling and uncurling tiny fingers. I sit here looking at her and I still can't believe this. How can I deserve it? Any of it. Yes, so a question from Alexander Falls. I think my question went on the radar, so I'll try again. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> I'm trying. Was Laudanum originally a bigger part of the gameplay? From uh, from what I remember vaguely, there was only two bottles in the whole game, one of which was easy to miss. Yes, um, that is correct. It was... There was ideas on, on having it be a bigger part of the game. And also, since Laudanum has this... Uh, don't drink while being pregnant thing. It was part of that, like, thinking about that uh, as well. But we, it didn't really add anything to the core buckets that I talked about earlier. Uh, so, so instead what we did was, what's this, um, like kept it on the outside. Um, hey, Riveria, uh, thanks for the sub. Awesome, thanks. There's no alerts going on right now because uh, this is more of a frictional stream. But thank you very much, Riveria. Um, I hope that was uh, was enough of an answer, Alexander Falls. It was there was ideas to bring it more into it, but we kind of felt it becoming kind of a si side thing uh, uh, for us. So yeah, uh, Gordon. Gordon Frenchman, are there like connections between Amnesia characters? For example, are these are there specific connections between Henri Clément and Tassi Trianon, or are they just totally unrelated? Oof. I, I actually this is not like there has been different writers on different projects, and I wouldn't feel comf comfortable answering lower questions in that respect because I might might answer them wrongly. Uh, I don't know all of the details of, of the lore uh, myself. So I would say uh, that no. I would guess no, there is no connection. Be between Henri Clément and Tassi there is no connection. Uh, I know that for sure. But when it comes to other people, I think there might be some little thing in... Uh, Rebirth that ties back to some person mentioned in some other game, but it's <laughs> it's very far off. 
I would say. So I'm sorry. The lore, the lore master is not here today. It's you get to have make do with with the creative lead instead. Uh, Ramen Lama, uh, do you prefer controller to keyboard and mouse? Yes, definitely. Uh, I, I definitely prefer controller. I play all my games nowadays with controller. Like 15 years ago I could... I'm old now. 15 years ago I could uh, play uh, games with uh, keyboard and mouse, but I can't anymore. I've kind of just been playing so much console. So, yeah. Oh, that's better. Reminds me of somewhere else. This it is feels a bit like the shrine at Douvre. Back home. This is where the game should end. Leave here now. I actually don't remember every single place where there's items and stuff, so Holy Mother, hear my plea, teen. Looky looky. I do remember. Oh shit, we have so many. By the way, sorry if I, if if the word shit is annoying to you. That's I can't go without saying that word. In some countries that's a maybe a more foul word word than it is in Sweden. <laughs> so You'll have to live with that. Like it's used here much more freely. I never thought I'd miss the desert sun. Here's another one of those. Why did they bring Lucas Ritter note over here? Must have been Salim. Thought he'd bring it with him. Get a flashback from him? Yeah, we had a drink. He's okay. Just a bit quiet because his English ain't great. Absolutely head over heels for his wife. Cold fish that she is. This looks a bit dodgy, guys. Careful. Oh, yeah, I made it. Oh, nothing bad can happen here. Oh no, don't drop! Ouch. And those moments then are also part of the gameplay when you're getting really like overtaken by fear then you get into those struggles where you have an opportunity to at least a few times try and get out of it by, by using the, the sticks. Um, Sorry, just gonna check here quickly. There was a. Uh, what made you change your streaming time though? Uh, no, Riveria. I, I don't have any streaming times. I play whenever I get a chance, then I stream. And this stream specifically is during work hours because it's like a, a frictional stream. So this is going up on, on um, Frictional's YouTube afterwards. So if you weren't here from the beginning, then you might not know so that's why it's a bit different there are no alerts there are no uh none of these uh, small things where you can sacrifice your channel points for making me sing or whatever those are for my hobby streams so <laughs> yeah. 
I've even turned off the the ads, so uh, they should. Uh, if you see ads, let me know, but they shouldn't be popping up. There's something. My eyes. No. What? What's wrong with me? Ah, uh, hang on. Can't see. Am I blind? Oh, it's over here. It's been a while since I played this game, so be aware that I might get confused. That moment there was do? was us like being taken over by it's gone now completely. by fear and actually going into a place and running like that. Hang on, I gotta check here. It seems like my laptop actually died on me and it's gonna show yeah. Let's see if there's any more messages that I missed out on. Yeah, so if if there are ads still running, guys, then uh, uh, I'm I'm sorry about that. I tried turning it off, but there was there might be some issues with that. It should be turned off. Actually, he was uh, so okay. So, Kolk Kolkos chairman. Um, Again, this then comes down to me answering like, I do not know since I wasn't here from the beginning and the, and the, the story lead uh, might have thought about him being part of this. So Weyer, I don't remember his first name, name now, but, uh, but we actually had some ideas for him to be part of Bunker, to be honest. But yeah. He is uh, the person who... Johan Weyer, yeah, 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 thank you. Uh, he is kind of the the person who managed to really get uh, the, the orbs to work with the orbs and, like, managed to, to handle those. And I don't think he's mentioned or anything here. Oh, the first ads when you enter stream are mandatory, but when disabled, there will be none during the stream. Okay, cool. Okay, cool. Hi, Latix50. Thank you for clarifying that. Yep. Okay. I hope that was like a bad, it was a bad uh, answer, I guess, uh, Chairman. But sorry, it's, it's always that case when someone else has been doing all of the details for the story and... Uh, the world uh, for this specific game then it's difficult to know all of the details what is this stuff by the way why can't i throw i'm just wondering if if this has actually happened on this game as well i had this problem earlier where do we have Throw L B and I'm trying that, but it doesn't seem to do. Maybe I can't throw this. No, it seems to be throwing it. It's too heavy. This, this thing on my wrist, it, it feels alive. Is it mine? I, I don't remember. 
So now we see this. So as you can see, it's kind of like a compass. If I turn around, it starts to flicker and it starts to point me in a certain direction. I've actually seen playthroughs where people didn't understand that. <laughs> that becomes a bit difficult, certain aspects, certain parts of the game. So some shit some weird, weird, thi weird shit's going on here. Uh, no, 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 I didn't want to do that. How did we... Yeah, that's right. Right, tr uh, right stick. So I can equip and unequip to open up these small rifts. There are rifts in our, like, in our world. It takes us over to uh, some weird stuff. Hey. How are you doing? Christ's name. How could I leave him? I know. I know it makes sense, everything he said, but... But it's such stupid fucking self-sacrificing bullshit. Listen. I know Selim. And I know you. I know what you're capable of. He'll make it. And you'll get back to him even if all hell stands in your way. I'm so fucking scared, I I know. Level door. <laughs> so Tapir 92, you've managed to break the game, right? Sleep well, Alice. So Alice is Tassi's previous child. Torches. Someone's been here. Hello? Anyone? This sound that you heard. That sound that you heard, that's when you get close to this, so that's uh, related to to this one, Compass. Another question, Def Dani, were there any criticism about the game that you didn't agree on? Uh, uh, that I didn't agree on. I mean, <laughs> you can read so much criticism. There's, there's like... No, I, I think it's all personal, to be honest. Uh, some people, uh, and I, I can't agree with someone saying, for example, uh, I can't stand a, 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 a talkative uh, female protagonist, or why is this a baby simulator, or things like that, because then you're not looking for this game. And so I, I don't think that kind of criticism, then there's like, so if we talk more, that those are personal things. But I'm starting to think, what have I read? What have I... Um, maybe some criticism that... I mean, I agree with it. So everything is just personal to people. Like, for example, that we show maybe a bit too much about the, sec like the dark world. 
I think it's cool, but I mean, some people would like it to be a mystery, more of a mystery still. I think it's time now to start expanding and showing people some more of this. Um, but yeah, no, I, I can't say like, so it's a difficult question. There's nothing like, I can also understand why people were th feeling that there were cheap, uh, cheap uh, jump scares with the with the flashes that we had but that was not our intention but they turned out to to a lot of people that way so yeah um let's see criticism you do agree on okay i'll out void i i guess you got some answer on that as well then um but it, i don't think it's for us to agree or disagree with criticism i just think it's it's so personal. Criticism is always going to be personal. Um, so hopefully for most of you who are here <laughs> now, you're here because you you gelled with this game in one way or another. So hopefully, or, or you're here to see what what kind of defense I can build for the game. But that's if you didn't like it, I mean. So that that that's just how it is. That's just how game dev development is. It's it's never going to be. You can look at Bunker as well, who's like, if you're looking at reception on Steam, for example, how many people like we have, Rebirth have less like percentage on Steam uh, than Bunker. Bunker is up to 93%. I think uh, Rebirth is 77 but it's reversed, not fully reversed, but it's, in, it's slightly reversed on when it comes to criticism on from journalists and uh, where where they gave like a meta score that is higher for rebirth than it is for bunker. So it's it comes down to what type of a game you want. And I mean, even for bunker, it's it's there is criticism. Some people write that they can't play the game because of a timer. The generator is a timer. Then the game is probably not for you. And I, I've seen some people who don't cope with it that run all the time or that pull the, the flashlight, even though it's clearly stated that these things make noise and then they get angry when they get attacked by the by the stalker. So, I mean, I mean, it's all just it's it's all just personal. Um, let's see. Do we have anything else? There's coming some questions <laughs> through here again oh, also by the way how do you usually react to those incredibly game-breaking speedruns of your game were there any ways of skipping important portions of the game that even you and development at frictional didn't know of i mean that's just awesome i, I love watching people uh, speedrun the games uh, that then you're uh, most likely that player who is speedrunning it has already played it like it was intended so i'm just happy if, if people can find more joy out of our games by doing that there's only the little issue for example with the bunker since bunker is built uh in a way so that you will you should have to go to each section of the of the game at least once and then there was this uh, thing where you could actually operate the the, the prison doors from the outside and uh, <laughs> we actually uh, we we patched that because that was not okay because that meant you could skip the whole maintenance level and that is core of the game so that we should patch those kind of things uh, yeah wrench skip yeah that's no longer possible but i know there's other ways people can break the game already so we're kind of okay with it now um but in general, speed running and those kind of things. So it's super happy. What was one of the most important lessons the team learned from Rebirth? Hmm. From Ram and Lama. Sorry, the previous one was from uh, Kolkos chairman. Um, Ram and Lama asks uh, most important, most important lesson. <laughs> Don't underestimate uh, fear flashes. No, uh, <laughs> the fear flashes was one thing, but it's it's easy to like. I think for that perspective, uh, 
I think from that perspective, it was a good thing to understand that that play testing up before beforehand. It's I mean we tested it on people, but no one commented on the fear flashes it's super strange maybe we tweak them up shortly before or something like that but then that's like if if it becomes frustrating and annoying for people then uh, then yeah um, um but i mean one important thing for me i think when the <sighs> having a story that goes over a certain amount of like when the story becomes the driver of the game it's very difficult to change anything because at the end there was ideas or things that we wanted to do that we could not really do because the story required certain things or the narrative required certain things um and that i think is a lesson at least for me and i think it affected us in a way certain things like we're going to get to it when we get to encounters with ghouls and stuff like that we can talk more about it there but yeah that there are things where where we you have this linearity and you need to follow that you can't cut anything because then you're cutting a piece of the story out or there's certain things that requires um, yeah oh uh there are so many messages let's see uh, what parts of the game did you work on what parts of the game did you work on so i'm uh, xander blast wrote that what parts of the game did you work on i mean i don't work on uh <laughs> i'm the most useless uh <laughs> so Quote me on this. I'm the most useless person on the on the whole frictional team. I don't I don't work on anything. Uh, <laughs> but then I guess I work on everything as well. So creative lead role is more like the person who should have the vision and talk to all of the disciplines and try and see how everything uh, gets together. Um, so uh, for me, it's it's more of a the lead. The creative lead has this kind of overarching thing where you need to play the game a lot, or test the game a lot, feel the game a lot, dream the game a lot. That's what I did with Bunker, at least. I remember waking up and also with Rebirth, but, but Bunker is more fresh in my head. So certain things comes back to Bunker, I guess, from that perspective. But so, so just coming on Monday, I, I remember coming on Mondays and going like, hey, we should try this little tweak or we should try and do this thing because it might influence this feeling or experience so in a way i and then having tons of meetings constantly that's what 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 i did on the game so there's no there's nothing i haven't touched in these games but there's uh, but from a technical or practical perspective i haven't touched anything so <laughs> i hope that makes sense uh yeah maybe like lead an orchestra Um, the Levio fan. By the way, our questions uh, after questions about speedrun in the bunker and rebirth. There are there is speedrun trophy for completing game faster than friction developers. So who is the best speedrunner in your team? I wouldn't say. Um, I don't know who is the best speedrunner, but and also the speedrunner is those. Those times, of course, is glitchless, so you're not supposed to use it glitchless. So playing the game through and getting to that point. I can be wrong here, but I think that Patrick in our team is one of the scripters, did those two times for Rebirth and Bunker that we use for the achievements. I can be wrong. I do think we have, especially fairly recently, we could have people that actually are better speedrunners than Patrick as well. But yeah. yeah. Um, so let's see. Uh, well, then we can continue. Oh. If you guys are overwhelmed by this, what do you think I am? I was able to meet them in the park this afternoon after talking to the factory manager at Dinar. A proud moment. 
Alice has learned to count to three with her blocks. Also, uh, Salim Anachi is, of course, played by Abin Galea, also a very good voice actor. She and did. It was super fun. And she did. She showed me there in the park. Alex and uh, and Abin made some uh, some of the scenes together and while we recorded this, which also was really nice. some spooky mushrooms yeah the amnesia rebirth protagonists also yeah ramen i guess if if i if i could change something and we're talking lessons learned i would probably have wanted to have opportunity to actually uh, move the move the story along without dropping Tassi too many times in this game. Uh, yeah, it's a stunning scene. I love the art done on this. Uh, and then, let's see, there was a question, Timon. Uh, do you remember anything about the mist lurker? Can you tell more about it? No, I don't remember anything about it, honestly. I, that that is actually no. I when you say it, mist lurker, uh, I go like, I remember we had plans for mist lurker, but I now I can't remember anything that's valuable to share. <laughs> I don't remember what we ended up doing, what we had planned for it. Island, that's some classic, classic gameplay. That's that's a, they're going to be a classic mod. My bracelet, it's glowing again. Here we find some notes from Herbert, actually. Uh, it's Amnesia lore again. Oh, you'll, you'll soon... Tassi has some damn slippery shoes.
Were there any from uh, Def Dani? Were there anything you had to cut because of engine limitations? Uh, no, I I don't think anything that we had to cut in that sense. So here's more notes from. I won't read these, but there are more more notes from Herbert. Is lying around here. So this is a clear connection to the lore of uh, of Amnesia: The Dark Descent, and I won't go into that during this stream. I think that's horrible. This is not how you want to end. Oh, I could throw now. Can throw certain things. There are shadows of the dead in the ruins. Oh, nice. I suppose you are Professor Herbert. Did I pick this up? Yes, I did. <laughs> His notes have been flying around. So these are, of course, there we have Weyer predicted. We at least have a mentioning of Weyer. See you out, Zvoid. Thanks for hanging out with us. So this is the place where I've seen some playthroughs where people didn't connect with the... With the... With this one. So actually using this is how you traverse this environment. Otherwise it's like walking around in soup. And we don't like that. We know how bad that is. Smashing things, that's my way of going about it, you know. Oh! You don't know what you'll find if you smash. That was not intentional, by the way. seen some playthroughs where players have been hiding as soon as they saw this go like fuck I can't go close to this one but they are safe
This is actually scary, even though I know exactly what's going to happen. It's unsettling. Did you, uh, from Sosconserv, uh, did you plan to reach out to Daniel and Herbert's original voice actors for voice lines? <sighs> no, we didn't, I think. Uh, and for Daniel, there is only one note, I think. Um, but no, we didn't, uh, we didn't consider that important. And we also said that the only voices you should hear are the voices that Tasi knows. Oh. So here we go, you can sense a new... A new rift coming in. Oh no, the engine from the airplane. end up in uh, so sometimes when we travel back through a rift we encounter these kind of pockets of dream like environments where Tassi is getting to experience some of the, the environments of her past I I have to remember Find Selim. Food is ready. Oh, can I see? It's not finished. Mm. It's terrible. Absolutely terrible. <laughs> Get out of here! <laughs> so, as since we're like a protagonist that is alone through this experience. We want to build up characters, some kind of feeling and connection to different characters. And we do that with these, oh, with these different moments, like the flashbacks and these kind of. Ministry of, Re uh, Ministry of Reaction, <laughs> Ministry of the Interior, Notice of Reaction. Yeah. I was 16, I think. And I must have driven him crazy. But no curfew, no locked doors, just this compass. He said it was so I would always find my way home. I wish I'd known him better. <laughs> so do I. <laughs> um, Rexer Gaming Z, uh, and one more question I have. Did you guys consider adding commentary like in The Dark Descent? <laughs> I think it's been mentioned, but not really considered. I think maybe we consider it quickly, but never really got um yeah found it 
maybe too much work. There was uh, people had some heavy experiences uh, on the previous ones. Uh, as creative director for Weber, that was your biggest priority when working on the game, like horror mechanic story. Uh, what was? Okay, I can take this. I just you don't have to write this one uh, from Xander Blast. What was your biggest priority when working on the game? Like horror mechanics, story, art direction, uh, etc. Everything. Like creative director at Frictional is kind of ha the one person that should have all of these disciplines as their priority. But for me, coming in halfway through, I guess the things I had to no, I had to focus on a lot of things. But I mean, art direction, that's... I have a, we had a great art lead on this project as well and the same goes for game mechanics but I mean the biggest for this game specifically the biggest uh, priority I guess was the the uh, not story but the connection between the player journey, player narrative, and the gameplay, I think. So everything focusing on these buckets I was talking about earlier. How do we build these things up? How do we have the player experience certain aspects of them? Like the torture bucket I was mentioning, the torture pillar, the uh, monster pillar. How did we like, so a lot of focus on these moments where the player get overtaken by fear um, yeah so I think in a sense I, I was focusing on the different pillars of the game Maka uh, by the way shouldn't I be supposed to open be able to open this door? <laughs> Salim? Oh, okay. I had to walk into it. Salim? I'm here. No! Venice. Oh, yes. And uh, sorry, if I should probably not have paused there. But um, hey, Norris, welcome. Norris is by is my original mod on on this channel by the way so <laughs> original we had one moment one stream together as mods i think ah, two maybe but um yeah so one thing going back to what was most important i guess for me um was also these kind of set pieces they became very important like you will see them in the future like, as we go on, but things like birth scene. Um, yeah, we have this moment where we meet. Um, uh, oh, now my brain. Uh, let me see. Uh, yeah, when we meet Jasmine and the uh, doctor, the teeny nun, the uh, different scenes when pregnancy is revealed. So I think, you know, in a sense, those kind of set pieces became also very important to try and help out help the team with uh, like getting them right no 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 Anish. these as well Anish. these type of scenes So this is kind of like a dreamy reveal of your pregnancy. Mm. 
Yeah, I've actually seen so so as a comment to that Ramen Lama, I mean I've actually seen people journalists writing that this game should come with a warning sign. And I, I guess I mean you could say that about movies then that, that certain heavy topics. Something's different. I feel like I don't fit my body. Oh, what the hell? I'm heavy. My gut feels like. Oh, oh God. So at this point, the player wouldn't know. <laughs> the player wouldn't really know, but an, an, uh, if you're an, like a player who looks down and kind of be very. Like. What do you say? I forget the word. They can actually see that there's a bit of a bump there now. So in the previous scene when the baby was hanging in the air in this dream sequence, you could see it growing at the end. So it's something that this kind of this trip that you made to this other world when coming back, time has kind of progressed your body, if that makes sense doesn't make sense but you know what I mean as soon as I now get into the dark darkness I start to get these flashes to tell me that okay watch out your your fear is getting high so oh, will I make it no Now the audio signals to me that oh two I'm dressed for success, guys. We're going in. <laughs> Sorry for being silly. <laughs> this should not be silly. Do we still have it? No. Damn. So as you can see also that these kind of black tentacles coming in on the outside of my screen. They are the more fear you have, the more oh, thank the Lord. those are pointing out over the screen. Oh Someone fix that place. That doesn't look right.
Wow. <sighs> yeah, that's a long text. Uh, maybe can we do like this Kolk's Kolk's chairman uh, can you keep this <laughs> can you keep this for later uh, <laughs> can we can we uh, can we maybe take it at the end of the stream so we play through more and do some short questions now then I can see if I can read this later on because now it's like very, very there's three messages so we can can have a look at it later I don't think it has to be it doesn't look like it has to be here in this specific maybe for the beginning of next stream or something we can we can talk about that <laughs> Uh, where did I go? Oh, yeah, I came down here. Can I have a look through that hole? That looks gory. These kind of small places I really like as well in, in the game. We have this kind of small pocket of light. He was here. He was. We said we would put him away. What's wrong? Poor monkey. We should clean him. Stitch him up here. He is so threatened. Oh, my heart. What is it? Alice. Alice will have a sister. Pregnant. Here's the big reveal. So, I, I'm, I think here's a good thing to, to just have a quick talk about, because this is also a place where we are not sure if we made the right decision or not, uh, from a marketing perspective. Um, because we decided, based off of the fact that we could see people, when they re like play tests where people were like coming to this point, not realizing they were pregnant and just getting hit with that information and they go like especially like seeing fathers or mothers play testing the game and they go like oh, okay i need to really be like really careful about my body in the game and all of this now and the stakes just were raised for them and we didn't as as you might have known not we did not mention in any marketing material that you play as a pregnant woman because we wanted players in as as much as we could have this experience to change like instead of going into the game okay let's see how it is to play a pregnant woman they came to this point and you had the reversion of like expectations and the kind of body horror kind of came into to play so it is one place where we still don't know for sure if we did the right decision to to not include it and it's also interesting to see that we got a lot of like articles written about the game like reviews and stuff but very few that actually focused on this aspect of the game because it's a, a very uh, because this was uh, yeah. Oh, I lost track. Sorry. 
<laughs> I'm starting to read the chat and then all of a sudden I forgot what I was saying. I, I think you know what I was like. It's a big, um, important piece of this game. And maybe I think it should have been... It's an interesting aspect to to player to, to try out and see where we're like where we could get with it in a game am I walking back the same way I came now no I'm on the right track No, I think uh, you're, you're right, Raman, and I think Same. older people, maybe, no, 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 oh no, people with kids, no, no. and yeah. Send him. No, please, my love. I'm here. I'm here now. Please stay. Stay for me, please. My heart. Heal my heart. What do I do? What do I do now? We're supposed to find you. I know I will not live. It does not hurt now. I have lost you, Tazi. It is only for a time. I know you will escape. You carry something so precious. Live for us, Stasi. Live for the child. Live and be free. And one bright day we will all be together again. Know that you are my heart. Yeah, so that settled our hunt for Salim. And all of a sudden... What? I can't stay here. I'm so, so, so in love. I'll do everything I can to keep her safe. Am I on the wrong path? I think I am. Hang on, guys. got to be something you can do so at this point in the game um so up until now we try to focus the player on finding salim salim is dead now we need to find a new and set a new goal for the player so we're switching it up the goal now survive for your baby start so this moment where she's breaking down but then pulling herself oh Hello? Is someone there? Oops. 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 Oh. Me 
Oof. Last time I played this game. I think that's a word for him. Uh, Norris, the last time I played this game was probably 2021. But I played it many times before that. Uh, we had another question from Blackburn. Uh, Blackburn. Okay, so a football fan, right? Uh, did all players, play testers like this idea? So, speaking about things we learned during the project again, I think what we learned is actually that it might not be the best idea to bring on board friends uh, and friends of friends and things like that to play test the game. I guess it sets it goes without saying, but I mean, so what we did on Bunker instead was to actually work together with a partner with external playtesting with people who don't have a kind of favorable relationship to either us or to someone close to us. Because even though we loved seeing how they interacted and did with the game, I think there's still a matter of maybe not, maybe they are already positively what do you say, gauged or gorged or like mindset is already there from the beginning. So I think you need someone who can come in with completely like fresh eyes and no connection to us whatsoever. So I think, for example, just as an example of those play tests we did with Bunker, there was no one mentioning this about the pregnancy, like as far as I can remember during the play tests of rebirth, like if you agree if you like the idea of, of being a playing a pregnant woman or something like that but uh, in the bunker for example play testing that there was uh, uh, the rats for example we had them be really aggressive <laughs> early on and realizing that people were like super frustrated with them they couldn't even go like on the side of the rats when they were eating on the corpse and things like that and and realized that we need to tweak this so that it's not as punishing and and that there were some playtests that were like fuck these rats and you could see this is becoming frustrating still some people find the rats in the bunker frustrating but they need to be frustrating if you go about them the wrong way but still it was too punishing uh for uh, for that for that <laughs> savant all my homies hate them rats yeah yeah uh but but rats they 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 would be super annoying if if you couldn't find a way to handle them and uh, and if they they didn't cover something of important ah oh, everyone hates the rats poor rats <laughs> hey dawn break uh, yeah um so and the short answer is play testers in rebirth maybe we should have gone also we could have used our like friends and friends of friends to do the play testing but we should have also done tests with external non-connected ones and maybe we could have spotted some of that but we also realized to be honest we realized that not everyone will like playing as a pregnant woman and we took that like this is what we wanted to test out for those where it works to see if it be can become a very strong, interesting experience that they carry with them. So let's go. But the robots in Alien Isolation, they, are, uh, they don't give you any benefits if you handle them. God in heaven, Sally. But if you handle the Here rats in Bunker, you will what get a dog tag. Do? Just look at me. So here's where we start to introduce the... I can't believe I forgot this. So maybe interesting, because this kind of mechanic Go came from... Child. Like you said, find the others. Get home. So, I mean, some people think it's press B for baby and all of that. But in <laughs> if you look at it from a game design perspective, and if, if a player goes in with the right mind, the mindset that we want them to have, then this is an important mechanic. Uh, and uh, 
it came from actually the idea that's one of the things i brought to the to to the project i guess because that was not here when i took on the role as creative lead but i have two kids on my own and i remember my uh my partner she was constantly during pregnancy she was always having her hands on her belly patting the belly all of these kind of things so i started talking about that and we even like i even wanted her to show me how she did uh, while she was pregnant and and uh, and that kind of came from that kind of connection with something inside of you and i think pregnancy <laughs> something pretty spectacular if you look at it like we're carrying it <laughs> another human being inside of us and that is like a challenge to do from a game uh, design perspective you, you guys that's what we set out to do with this game try and connect with something in that way that like for us especially men to try and connect with the idea of carrying something within ourselves it's just crazy to try and do so we're not trying to give you that kind of strong i i'm not saying amnesia rebirth simulates that very well but it has that kind of connection to it um and and how we give you a benefit the player a benefit of having the baby instead of just also like so this mechanic that you see when you're talking to the belly that can halt the fear taking you over and things like that so you can use that while being in darkness to kind of uh, the, make sure that you that you keep your fear away so we give the player a benefit from their companion in that sense instead of it being just a worry and just something negative uh, like negative in this situation <laughs> i mean the baby it's not ideal to be stranded in the desert with a uh, with a baby in your belly so so we wanted to give some kind of gameplay perspective and where you feel that the that the unborn baby actually give you uh, a way to feel more safe and less fear Hope that makes sense. Beautiful. This is not where you should be going, by the way, but if you if you want to oh, I'm forgetting what the... Ah forgetting the buttons. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh shit. <laughs> Look at this. Yeah, so the controls. I've been playing too many other games. Okay, I used one and got too so that's that's a win in my book so at this point with what we could see with playtesters especially with like i remember one of the uh, one of the playtesters he was a father when he came to this ledge he's like oh shit no this is horrible he just come from like he had a small kid at home and all of a sudden Oh no, I can't just drop down here. Uh, I need to be careful. How do I do this? And um, yeah. So it became this kind of awareness of your environment that maybe as a gamer, like with any, with most other player characters, you don't really care if you fall over or if, but here you go like, okay, can I hurt the baby? Sudan, Mr. Sterling, this is Algeria. 
It might be Tin Hinan, the mother of the Tuareg. It's a strange style, though. Oh yeah, the lighting, uh, uh, that's the only thing I worked on in this game, so I should give myself a raise then. Only kidding, only kidding. That was a reference to Buttery Vgnis comment about the person who did the lighting in this game should have a raise. But we have so many talented artists. All of these levels are worked on by different ones. This one, however, was actually quite tricky to, to do the lighting on, as you can imagine. There, that building. Oh god, we were so close. It's not a friendly suffice it. Count your lucky stars on it, chap. We could have come down in the middle of nowhere. Don't worry, Jonathan. Supplies, water, a map, there'll be something. Even if there's no one home. Lycos would have gathered the place. Bitchy. Locals will get the price. There's our current objective. Yeah, so actually, don't we have a little surprise over here as well? Ah, Scorpio. You stay away from me. You hear me? Nothing. Kel Hanan. So more, uh, more lore, and of course more things that might be of value or like make the rest of the game more interesting. And we're going to get through this gate and then I'm going to take a very short break, like... Actually, five minutes break, I think. Been playing for two and a half hours. Sergeant Fournier is fornicator is a fornicator so we have a fournier in here as well oh. not safe for work I did check in here, yeah, yeah. You know what to do with this one? Everyone? Anyone? Ah, nothing. made a loop From Strug, did the team reuse this exact shelf for the bunker? <laughs> yes. 
Why not? Uh, were those pictures taken for the game or were they bought online from Puresh One? I don't know. I I can't answer for every single asset. Uh, if I would have been art lead on the project, then I could have answered probably, but I don't know. Um, let's see, Kolko's chairman again. Also, Mr. Olson, since you were so kind to not ban me for my long ass question, here is a really quick one. I was also a <laughs> really quick one. I'm not sure that classifies as a really quick one. Uh, I was also a little bit confused about the role of Tassi's father in the game. He's only mentioned a couple of times, which also made me wonder if he was supposed to play a bigger role, or is he here to just allude to the more symbolic nature of things in Rebirth and psychologically deepen Tassi and the nature of her bonds with Salim and Amari? Yes, the last part is correct. It deepen the... Um, it's, it's It never... There was never a plan to, um, for for um, the play the father to play a bigger part in in this, but rather to connect to Salim uh, and Amari. Yes. Uh, yeah. Uh, let's do a quick uh, like five minute. Let's do a five minute break, guys. Can we do that? I need to stretch my legs and bring some more water in here and things like that. I will leave this up like this. And when you see it going down, um, then we're back. Um, five minutes from now, see you soon.
Okay, I'm back, I think. Yes, I am back. Um, so, we've um, just taken a decision here, talking a bit. This has been <laughs> pretty jump scare. Yeah. Um, I think uh, this has been fantastic. Such awesome engagement from you guys in the chat love answering all of these questions and playing this through but it's taking more time than i expected i'm guessing the questions are like getting fewer and fewer apart from uh, uh, apart from uh, the, sh the chairman uh, user who want to make the longest questions in the world but uh, <laughs> Yeah, no, your your yeah your questions are getting shorter as well. Um, but we've taken a decision that we're going to continue for one hour and fourteen minutes. So at five o'clock Central European time, we're going to finish for the day, and then back tomorrow at one o'clock, like one p.m. Central European time, like the same time we did this one, and continue then. I think that's the best. Uh, hello, Ashen, Ashen One Sangria. Uh, what's your favorite monster design in the games you've created? <laughs> oh man! So in the games I've been involved in, I guess, because I don't want to, I, I want to narrow it down. Since I wasn't part of Soma, uh, or uh, uh, Soma or or the Dark Descent. Uh, I came in after Soma. Just after Soma, I started with Frictional. Um, so I guess I actually really like the rates. I really like the rates, but I gotta say, I I even like uh, now nah, the Beast from the Bunker is my favorite. <laughs> But I really enjoy the, the the rates in how they move around and uh, yeah. But so I, I really like a lot of our monsters. But, um. <laughs> uh, we oh. We could sit here and talk all night, all day long and all night long about the bunker and all of these things. Uh, so I just got to answer Ray, Rakesers Gaming's um, question. I have one more question about the bunker. Did you guys always decide on a pistol and a shotgun as the two weapons or did you consider other weapons too? Actually, the game was very like it grew organically we knew about the gun when we started we didn't really know about the shotgun until maybe we came up with the idea of this shotgunner down there and then oh then we can pick up the shotgun and have this kind of moment where you decide if you want to attack him or not and which would allow you to get the shotgun uh, yeah so so i mean and then we talked actually about the flamethrower and uh like this kind of Gatling gun, similar thing, stationary gun. I, th this was my idea that never got into the game, that we'd have a stationary Gatling gun near the entrance so you could lure the monster back if you were running and then sit down and just pepper him <laughs> with, <laughs> with bullets. But that never happened. So, I mean, we had to cut some stuff. Uh, but Flamethrower was also part of the dialogue for some sometimes. <laughs> yeah. uh, the question um, from Latix50 this will be a full game dev commentary yes I will. I plan to play through the whole game unless we sit there and talk old memories for too long I'm going to get back into it now guys are you okay with that uh, instead of so yeah <sighs> Flamethrower has been done though. Oh, we missed. Did I miss the moment where the ghost appeared? She's kind of showing us the way. Maybe I missed that one here because I paused. I think there's a hidden uh, note somewhere here about 
Jonathan Weber, the engineer. So when you get those kind of notes, we brought in a little flair about the person, like a memory flashback. Ah, oh, Jonathan's great. First time out in the world, and everything's a wonder. It's like having a kid along. Oh, jeez. Sorry, Tessie. Take a look ahead. The rest of you, hold tight here. Won't be long. Tazi, what's the sign say? My French is piss poor. <laughs> just, um, just that they were a long way from home. does the sign say? My French is piss poor. <laughs> Precious jewel, and look at you! <laughs> so Alice, Alice was growing up there on the... We were here. I remember being scared. Why? Crikey! Look at the size of this place! So here's one of the the hub areas of this uh, of this game. It's at least a bit hubby. times I've heard that line. I think this is a water pump. And here you have this moment where you can actually see yourself. I don't know if everyone I, I'm just not thirsty. Picks up I on that. Be, I know, but I don't think I can stomach it. So there, oh, we had this moment where we wanted the player to have an understanding of how you look, and we'll come to that later. Please remember that moment till tomorrow. There's another moment later on where you can check actually. Let's take a look in that building on the left there. Valley, you and me up front? There's a light flickering over there, right? That's the doctor. Hello. Can anyone hear me? So I've been playing these games, Dishonored and Prey and all of that, then I would just go like, okay, there has to be at least five or six ways into this place. That's not how we did it in Rebirth, though. It's not an immersive sim. But there are multiple ways in, so it's not that far away. Hello, 
Ramen Lama, did the team ever think about a full French dub? I mean, I'm part of the team and I've been thinking about it, but it was never. It's coming! It's coming! Through the gate! Come on! Move it! It's such an undertaking to do a, a full dub. For a small team like ours, it's it's not really worth it, so to say. Oil for the lantern. I thank you very much. Got too many matches. Okay, so we want to get through that door. Hello. This is Dr. Anyone there? How do we get through it? Could be, perhaps. Could we, perhaps, use this? Hmm. Oh, looky looky. Now all we need to do is fire it. Shish kebab. It's already used. Okay. Maybe we can find more of those bullets. Actually, isn't the armory? We found a, a key in there. Maybe we can go here. It's... Arsenal. Sorry, not the armory. The arsenal. Mama's here, so don't you cry. I'm here. I'll always be here. Oof. Buttery, how much involvement did you personally have with the story of this game? Yeah, I mean, the the story of this game. I mean, it's not me who who written the whole, laid it all all out. But as I said, for example, I kind of. Maybe it was a driver in things like, okay, the, the birth scene that comes later, to move that earlier, to have a moment where we take away your companion, those kind of things. And that's kind of connected to the, the story, if you call like the player journey part of the story here. Um, so those kind of things, and that changed a, a, a up some things also like when it comes to the dark world how that is pictured i guess partly uh, my i had a lot of input on that but i wouldn't say like the story is so like that was written by our uh, story lead ian who, who did like all of that said so i wouldn't take any credit for the story on this one uh, I, i've made like whenever there was changes they suggested by me they were not related to maybe the story but rather to the player experience and how things i want for example the player to feel that horrible sense of losing this thing that they've cared about uh earlier like and and, and those kind of things so yeah let's see um sherman also what are your personal favorite moments of rebirth Mm hmm that's a difficult one i have multiple i think i would say uh, i mean if we're if we're talking moments in the sense of more set pieces 
like more cinematic moments. I would say uh, when you meet Jasmine, uh, I would also say the uh, I really like the birth scene, uh, the ending. Um, but I also like the moment where you're in this, uh, you know, the shuttle in the dark world. So those moments I really enjoy uh, from a set pieces and how they like. And then from a gameplay perspective, I would probably say the fort is really cool, but I would maybe I like the 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 so you, as you can see i like a lot of the places but i mean the maze down with the the hunting grounds the uh also the cistern also the dark world encounters uh, yeah no i like a lot of these moments to be honest um from Big Dandy, uh, is there anything you learned while at Tarsier Studios that you carried over to Friction Hall? Mm, no. <laughs> no. I mean, definitely, I mean, from me personally, for for me personally, it's it's everything I've worked on up until now has been so such a like learning curve. So for Tashir, it was super interesting to work with Media Molecule, like I did very closely. But that was in a producer role, like always evolving in how you approach leadership and and those kind of things and how you communicate with people. But maybe not specifically like for games in that sense yeah maybe creative lead wise but that was maybe not so much tars here but it was more media molecule since i worked together with people there uh, i took like started understanding when i took on the role as creative lead here i started understanding things i've seen during those projects with the creative lead there so i guess but it's all like it's a mix what makes a person personal things um the Levio fan, I love how Stalker have much in common with ghouls and it fits perfectly for the game. Also, have you thought about making the Stalker able to smell the player like ghouls in Rebirth do? Uh, no, I think uh, uh, it's rather that we what we did was that we allowed for the rats to become even more annoying for you guys. So we let the rats be the ones sniffing up the blood trails and then kind of signaling uh, and screaming sque squealing so that the monster could hear you because if the stalker could hear you because if we start introducing another mechanic from the stalker it's so easy to just say he hears you sound is the worst thing for you when it comes to the stalker so instead rats follow your blood trail make sounds stay around you scream at you then stalker effects so it's simple mechanics in bunker i mean very simple mechanics that work together <laughs> so no it was never uh never mentioned in in that uh that that the stalker himself should be able to smell you alexander falls this is a very random one but were any parts of the roman ruin encounters inspired in any way by the movie the descent I haven't seen the descent. Uh, so let's see the Roman ruins. No, we're talking rebirth now, right? Uh, Alexander Falls. Are we talking Rebirth or are we talking Bunker? I'm losing track here uh, because there are Roman ruins in both. And the Descent, I know, I think I know which one it is. Uh, yeah, the Ghoul Lair encounters. Okay. No, I. I think I've seen the, the Descent. Oh, yeah. 
because that's the one where they are down into some caves. It's very dark. I think it, we actually used it as a reference at some point, uh, but I haven't watched it myself, but uh, it probably has some influence at least on it. Uh, Ram Lama, what did you think of the music in Rebirth? Is there a track that stands out to you? Oof, I can't really, I, I can't really remember now. Let's see, maybe we encounter it while we go through because it's been a while since I played it now, so sorry. I don't play it as often as you do, Ramen <laughs> Lama. Uh, so, uh, yeah, <laughs> let's see if I find, I, I, I think the music is fantastic throughout the game. Absolutely love working with Nico, uh, but yeah. Oh yeah, this is also one of the moments I really like, actually. Uh, the, the, this um, later on in this level. It's been a lot of. I've been working hard on 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 that room with the team. So, if low on sulfur stock, check medicine supply for ointment of sulfur. Boil to extract. Not ideal. Makes powder mix in unpredictable. But prefer better than nothing. Ask Kadir in doubt. It's Captain Kadir in doubt. So we can make another bullet. Bullet. We can light that if we wanna. Can't go through here. Before you take uh, before you take the goods up to the main building, check Captain Delacroix is available. The quartermaster must be present at all times to check the delivery. Do not leave boxes out in there. Yeah. So here we get to know basically Saltpeter. All of these we're starting to like build up reminders that we need. Saltpeter is in the quartermaster's stores. Charcoal, we need sulfur because we need it for the tank. This is Bunker Trap 101. No, nope. but we can actually. How does this look, by the way? Does it look good from this angle? Shit! <sighs> I'm happy it looked pretty good. Let's put on the stove. Turn on the stove. Ooh, charcoal. Maybe we can grind it, right? That's the charcoal. So we got one of the things, I think. Yeah, you can see the green check mark. Oh, you can hardly see it underneath my my camera, but more questions from Chairman. Always, when you see this big lump of information of text, we know who's who's coming with. 
Uh, not really a rebirth question, but I probably won't get to ask you about your uh, work on your casual streams. But since you've already got to work on some drastically different games and learned your lessons, what would be your like dream project in terms of genre, story, etc.? Would you be up interested in making an immersive sim game since you seem to love them so much? <laughs> oh man. I mean, I hope that my next project is going to be my dream, <laughs> my dream project. So, so if, if like the next project I work on, so, um, so I think, let's say that bunker is, is something I've really enjoyed, uh, working on and playing and all of the things like when you get the whole team saying like I can't understand how fun this game is to test over and over and over again and I feel the same that's the kind of games I want to make moving forward as well like for me personally that's what drives me now like give the player choice uh, and and trust the player to to interact and do what what's needed i think there's too few games doing that immersive sim of course is doing that but there's very few immersive sims compared to other games because mm. i wouldn't mind making an immersive sim no uh, but let's see what the next one will be i think uh, uh, for me personally i think going in the route of, of uh, the bunker is probably where you want to go but bigger. Let's go. This room I was talking about. What happened here? These kind of set pieces where I don't know if you know, but it's possible actually to get in. This is a bit imsimi. There are ways of actually getting in here, I think. Um, don't remember how. How now? Sorry. Oh, you can only break it from the other side, that's right. So, multiple ways of doing this. We can, for example, light this one. Let's try and light more than one. No, too late. Let's, let's get some light in. Maybe this isn't such a great idea. Ooh, I hate that sound. So one way of getting in is to take this key and unlock this. But if you check closely, there's something there. And there's this way in. Ah! Oh, shit! One bad move. What's happened? Oh, 
First death, yes. So this then, from a dev commentary point of view, this then, I didn't die, but I progressed in my monster, like what I'm, what's happening to my body, you can say. Let's see if we can get over here now. And then that falls down, so we can't get back that way. Tickly, tickly, tick. No, oh, he's dead. Actually, he's dead. So here's that second one. Someone was mentioning that there was laudanum in here. Well, here we got the dude who has rigged himself. He's been seeing, sitting here, like we can read. I guess his note, but he's not the person we know, so it's not a voice note because of that rule. So he's rigged himself here because he was hearing his men being tortured just outside by some monster. So what we can do now is do that, but it's more fun if we do that. No, 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 no. I nearly died from that. At least that opened the door. And this that you could break if you want to get out without having to interact with the grenade. Oh, there's uh, another one here actually. So, and then on this it says do not use in children under one year old or during pregnancy may cause respiratory distress sulfur that's what we needed and this note is actually something for you to read if you play the game I think it's so just putting yourself in his shoes is like a horrible situation. I kind of like, so you were asking about good like moments, I, I really like that one. So now we need to Put that on and just so you're aware the scripter Alex who made this he made it so that it goes faster if you put on the <laughs> lid <laughs> it doesn't seem to go faster after all yeah it's done hello welcome welcome Lolita the Ripper 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 so uh shit, someone's made a mess here. They could just clean up. Do any more uh more questions? Norris, for an idiot that knows nothing about dev work, it's me, I'm the idiot. What is the difference in creative lead and creative director? Sorry if it was asked already. So I mean this is very much like there's no rules out there. Um um, there are no rules, I think, out there on other studios, what they call their... But, but from our perspective, so a creative lead is a project role. So that's the person who kind of has the final say of a project. That's how we see it. So I was the like project, like creative lead on, on this one and on Bunker, so that like I had to worry about everything about the vision uh, then you have leads like a level down you can say that focuses on specific disciplines an art lead and uh, a story lead a scripter lead a gameplay lead those kind of things uh, but the creative director for us is Thomas so that's a company or a studio uh, role so Thomas is both creative lead on 
another project that he's working on. But he's also a creative director on the studio. Just so that we're like, no one questions that, like for me especially, coming in new to the creative lead role, I go to the creative director for help, for um, for like just, it, it's basically Thomas's, Thomas started this studio and from a creative perspective nothing should come out of the studio that that he's not okay with if you if you uh, see it like that from a creative point of view uh, I mean so if you look at bunker for example Thomas so I had this vision for the bunker and Thomas said like okay that sounds like your uh, like quite a different approach with one save like if you look at rebirth for example it has a sim more similar approach to the games we made earlier where you die like i did and i get past it and i can continue playing and it's more focused on the narrative whereas bunker is much more focused on the player's narrative where you create these kind of dynamic moments throughout the game it's a very different like core for the games um, and Thomas like so I brought my ideas and whenever I felt uncertain about something I, I went to Thomas with them and, and we're bouncing them back and forth and things like that but he was also like realizing that hey you need to do what you uh, believe in here and if he started going in and say no Fred you shouldn't have one save point you should uh, uh, that might become frustrating Th those kind of things I think Thomas just uh, felt like then I'd lose interest in maybe the project and instead he said okay let's let's go with it and I remember him saying afterwards hey, he was a bit worried <laughs> but but at the same time he was very happy and proud of what what we created with the bunker so I mean sometimes you need to lead like a creative director at our is more of a like and Thomas is really good with those things like just uh, people need to burn for the stuff that we do otherwise trying to change them or, or it, it, since he had his focus on other stuff he couldn't go in and be the lead on bunk for example in that way so instead he's just like a uh, overarching role for the studio I don't know uh, uh, oh, by the way, where did Jens... Oh, he left uh, the studio quite, uh, after Soma. So basically he left and I came, uh, came instead. You can say. So we're missing one... Uh, did, I, did I answer your question, Norris? Basically, project and studio, diff that's the difference of the focus of the, of the roles. So it's the same, so Thomas would say, I'm the creative director, he's, cre he's the creative director of Frictional Games, but he would also say that he's the creative lead of the next project that he is currently working on. But I very much he is. Look. I very much doubt that that is the same on other studios. So they're a creative director or game director or whatever. So it's just up to every studio to try and find their own. Hello. Radio. Is not talking, doctor. Got to get to that radio. Hmm. Yeah, the fort is really good as well. I gotta say, it's a really. I I started to get flashbacks. So I like this environment as well. I like a lot of stuff in French children, I suppose. Trouble with the locals, quickly. Bite marks too. See, hyena maybe. A damn big one. Didn't finish its meal. 
trouble with the locals. Hyena. Actually, Ram and Lama, I remember going. I think I went into your stream when you per were playing this this section, maybe your first time. <laughs> that was pretty fun. You were kind of just sitting in one of these rooms for a while. Is that correct? Am I remembering correctly? Maybe not your proudest moment. was fun watching. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. Hang on, guys. Sorry, shouldn't have jumped out just there. about uh, this Kelenan uh, people kind of religion that's a hole shit I forgot about that one that actually scared me a bit something Something just did that. when you felt truly terrified while testing and creating rebirth or did you approach from a more mechanical side of things uh, actually i'm a bit of a scaredy cat when it comes to playing <laughs> games and watching movies so i've been i think i was really i i have an easy way to <laughs> to to channel fear and i still get <laughs> Uh, maybe not now with Bunker, but for a long time, like I, I played Bunker much more than I played Rebirth. So uh, during the development, so I, I think I, for example, when we made a decision to move the stalker into the walls more, and him sitting in the the holes and just making noise and seeing these things, that uh, 
that moment when we moved it, I went to Thomas and said, "Hey, I think we might have done made a too scary the the game too scary now." And Thomas was like, "Ah, sounds good." <laughs> and I was like, "No, I actually mean it might be too scary because I had a hard time playing it." So I'm I'm I mean. In the end, you probably, I mean, I've seen the monster in its glory, for example, the, the, the stalker, the, the ghouls, the, the wraiths, we've worked with them for so long. So in a way, they don't scare you as much as, uh, as a regular player that don't, don't get to see them th uh, uh, that much. So, but in, in the end, I'm, I'm getting tense. I'm, uh, and scared by these things, um, but I think that's really nice um, because it's easy to. I, I also seem to have a, a, a ability to immerse myself into the games I'm playing, and even if I played them before, I can immerse myself, and that helps a lot with like getting scared. <laughs> Norris, I'm sure if you can answer, but I've always wondered in any given level, is there deliberate thought put into how many matches there are to find? Oh, yes. Uh, I mean, yeah. But it's difficult because, and I think maybe we have some kind of, uh, I don't know if we have, I think we have some kind of uh, balancing act there where if the player has a certain amount, they can get, if they have very few, they might get more from a certain pickup. Um, so, um, the, the, but this is like that balance and, and uh, uh, that, that means, uh, uh, sorry starting to get a bit tired now <laughs> from playing um, um but yeah the, they're definitely balancing acts to every single level uh and that's up to the design lead on the project that kind of works more with those things because it's a gameplay specific thing uh and also there might be some cheating going on for example with uh, if the player has fewer and things like that um <laughs> so we had you're saying that you're holding back on monster design strug says what why did i say that holding back on monster design i don't know what what did i say that <laughs> uh i i didn't fully follow that i don't know if i said something i could have been misinterpreted as that but i know i'm not I, I don't think we're holding back on that Lolita the Ripper, I don't know if someone asked you about the... Ah, okay, you already got the, uh, the survival gameplay overhaul. Yeah, I played it twice, even. I think maybe only one is up on my YouTube, because I didn't know how to export these previously. But yeah, they are, they are awesome. I don't know if Saint is still here, uh, Saint Conqueror who made the mod, but he's... He's a constant follower in these streams as well now. So we played it on that. Absolutely love it. Adds such a cool thing on top of things. Um, um, but yeah, Strug, did you, uh, I mean, making them less scary. I, no, yeah, you m must have misunderstood that struck no 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 we're not making the monsters less scary <laughs> no that would be bad i uh, what i meant is that they i get desynthesized to them when i work with them like we are designing them seeing them as a 3d model and all of that that's what i meant then i get desynthesized because the question was if i get scared or not uh so um uh, so I guess I get less scared of the looks and the sounds of the, these monsters because I've heard them so many times different ways. Yep. Uh, oh, thank you, Kip Karel. Uh, thank you, and happy to have more and more people coming through here. It's like such a big stream, this. Uh, we're playing for 25 more minutes. Um, Let's see, can we maybe actually 
Oh, I'm getting stuck here. Can we actually maybe get through the fort in that time? I think that would be a good goal. Hmm, I want to get up there. I want to get up there. And as you can see now, when I walk into the darker area, it's, you start hearing the crackle. Okay. Winch from the elevator. Stirred. So they took the winch and put it on some kind of trap. Hmm. The winch should go in here. This is going nowhere. There's something missing here. There's something missing here. Oh shit! What? I'm out of... Am I out of... I heard something. Need more matches. I thought I had so many matches, but now they're all gone. Here's one. Uh, here's three, actually. I need to... So you really don't want to stand in darker areas. Okay. You can do clips if you wanna, Norris, that's fine. Don't mind that at all. So hang on. We need to find that trap. It's not here. It's maybe over here. Kitchen! Kitchen. <laughs> I suppose I should be. I said hungry. it first. Thirsty. I just feel a bit sick. I don't think I could handle it. Oh, where did it go? No. Did it fall out of the level? I needed that. Damn you. Oh, sorry. Yeah. It's my last one. There we go. Looky, looky. Oh yeah, we need to fill this up as well. This is a medium one, there's a small one. Uh, refill lantern. Let's use those, so 6 out of 10. Ah, oh, you haven't seen the lantern in its glory yet. This no. Is stuck solid. Damn it, I've got to reach that radio somehow. Now you see these kind of flashes are coming. They were much more heavy on the <laughs> on the heart. The first version we released. So I'm starting to reach a high level of Oh did I not pick up the did I pick up yeah I picked it up. Okay.
So we're going in here to find the last third ingredient. This is actually something I was pushing for personally, that I wanted this to be the case where you go like this and you go like, what the heck? What's going on here? I didn't want it to be as easy as just putting this one in. People were saying, oh, it's gonna be physics that can break, but we made it. I'm happy about that because it's like some people are just scratching their heads when this happens. Took you two hours to do that. Keep girl, okay. I'm sorry about that. I think it's more fun. And did you feel stupid when you found the solution? Any more questions by the way? Yes. Oh um why, uh, from Kremtastic, why did you decide to add the safe rooms in Rebirth? I really like the concept. The door locks and soothing music feels great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, because you have this kind of high tension. Um, it's kind of pumping just higher and higher and you need to have a release of that. So that's why we... Uh... <laughs> And, and then and so so you need a release and a way to interact and put yourself if you can do that by yourself actually close the door lock it and feel uh, that it feels much better than us just introducing an area where you walk into it you start to hear oh nice music it's better if you go in there close the door and and lock it because then you've actually done something yourself uh, and here's the only uh, Daniel letter. This is written by Daniel from The Dark Descent, right? Found an unfinished letter from an archaeologist to his sister. Now the sniper will shoot it. Oh yeah, the cannon has been... Uh... And also people are scaring themselves with this shadow. I've seen that many times. What? I'm gonna act. <laughs> yeah, I don't have that many achievements left actually. This is one of my favorites. Little scares is in this. Bastards didn't die fighting. Look at this chap here. Suicide. Why? Why would they do that? Look, what's this? They drew straws. Three balls. Here's one of my favorite. Uh, I don't know. It requires some stuff to trigger. I'll see if we can do that. It's one scare that I really enjoy here. Oh, uh, okay, come on. Don't remember the requirements for it. Yeah, I think I remember now. Yeah, you need to enter twice, yeah. So this was what you were having problems with then. Now we need a th fourth wheel. Because what we want to do... Hello. 
Let's get it to fall. Oh, look at this guy. Am I really scared? Oh yeah, see you Oscar. See you tomorrow. The wall ate the dude. So it's only 14 minutes left before we end. I'm just gonna check if there was if Oscar posted uh, something else before. Uh, was there any more? Uh, I have one other question for the bunker. Were uh, from Raxer Gaming Z. Um, were flashbacks considered for the game for bunk for the bunker? Uh, no, I don't think we ever really cared like it didn't no it didn't feel like flashbacks were a thing in that game i think the intro and the ending i think tied it all together <laughs> and then everything between uh, but it was more like that game we said like the vision for that game was for the bunker was there should not be a dull moment in that game everything should be challenging from the second you wake up in the bunker uh is it already t time to answer my mega question um okay guys um mm, let's see if we can take your mega question uh, with, uh, like the final question because now oscar left this always looks so strange when you see it in uh, oh, hang on. Wrong buttons. Another scare coming up if you're... If you're worried. Ooh, a big one. I shouldn't... Shouldn't signal the scares, by the way. I will... Nothing. <laughs> I challenge every one of you to write a longer question. Yes, we can see if we can do a few minutes of that before we end. But then for more questions, I think we should stop with questions now because it's so few minutes left. I would love to finish this part of, uh, of the game before we leave. And then we can continue tomorrow for those of you who can join. Ugh, come on. So let's see if we can trigger this now. It's one. It's quite a fun one. Maybe I need to go over here. There we go. Oh no, so now fear is taking over. I need to try and struggle this. Ah, yeah, I'm managed without dying. Okay, but I need to hurry up. I'm only keeping it. And now we can talk to the baby a bit, see if we can. I think that might not be possible just yet, by the way. Let's grab one of these, run back. Oh. Shish kebab. Okay, that should do it. 
rolling. I think they are triggered by a bunch of different things, but not the fear factor. Come on. Come on. I need light now, because otherwise we're gonna... Uh, poor guys. From a horror perspective, I really like this room, by the way. Once or twice, Big Dandy. Yes, Once or twice, yes, I, I played it before. Yes. Oh, thank God. No, first time. But, um, Sorry, first time. Doctor, please. There's something else. I uh, I keep blacking out. It, it, it feels like I'm losing control. I am aware of your recent problems, Miss Triana. In fact, Doctor. So, sorry, there are no news on our latest projects. You're taking the opportunity to ask those questions now when Oscar has left the modding scene, right? Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah, can't go there. This way. No, it wasn't against the rules, Keep Girl. It's okay. This place gives me the creeps. It's just that I. It's just that I told uh, Oscar before. You can take those questions when people are asking us about our upcoming projects. You can answer those in chat. <laughs> so it's more of a, yeah. So the quartermaster. Oh shit. Mother of God. Jonathan. Jonathan, he was so nice. He wrote those nice letters, do you remember? Okay, so we need the saltpeter somewhere around here, right? What's in the quartermaster? <gasps> Look, it's in there. Hmm. But it's locked, so. I guess we need to go this way. 
What the hell? Oh no. Shit. We survived. <gasps> Shit! No, 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 come on. <sighs> Fuck. Oh. I think... I think it stopped. <sighs> so, okay. How do we get... We need to get back in there, right? We need the saltpeter. <laughs> this is the part where I give up on playing Rebirth. You say that, you know? Okay. <laughs> Damn, I ruined my pants with this part. It's a nice build up and then. Uh... So we need to get back in here. This is one of my favorite things that people actually miss. So, ever wondered where Jon Jonathan's head went? I mean, the guy lying out here, he's lying here. No head, but if you go in here and a lot of people miss that, you look, oh, blood and stuff, and then you go like, what the hell? <gasps> Poor Jonathan. A dream. Yeah, it's so strange. It, we, we must have put it on like that's a game dev issue. You you think you you put it in a place like okay, of course people will see this and find this, but then you see a playthrough after playthrough, and you sit there and wait, and they go in there and then turn around exactly missing that that place. It's fun. <laughs> It's coming! It's coming! Oh, get it. Oh, Medic! Nah, God damn it, get over here! <laughs> It's a small uh, jump scares here, but actually that jump scare was here too, if players hadn't seen this, um, kind of triggering them to look there. <clears throat> yeah, it's correct. It's very easy to miss things that are high, high up. So if you're, so when I've been playing Prey and Dishonored on my stream, I always have a like have to force myself to continuously go around like this and look up because it doesn't come naturally. Uh, so we didn't need to just put the salt pitcher in here, I think. Uh, right? We need to put all of the stuff in here. One. And le three. Tres. And we have a new boule. Boule. A boule, as they call it in 
have all my fingers. France, right? Gordon, Boulet. Right, I guess. Is that little one? Kitty cat. Kitty cat. Still a happy story, that one. Still a happy story. Okay, we're about to end this stream now, guys. But we're gonna shoot ourselves out of this hellhole first. And into Ready. another one, maybe? I almost wish I had that creature perfect well. What could go wrong? That's okay, right guys? Are we ready? One, two, bully! every time Alice little one you talk about obus obus Guys, I'm the one who, who have been working on a game uh, about French people, so I have to be right that boulet is the word we use for tank guns from now on. Okay? Boulet. Oh, on the uh, belly. Oh, on the belly. God, little one. I felt them break. I felt them break, but they're not broken now. What the hell? Are you alright? I don't know how to tell. Shit. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I meant bullet, but I say it in my own way, yes. Okay, guys, I think this is it. Um, I'm going to do a save and exit here. And then I'm going to read that long question uh, that we had earlier, because I promised to do so. Or do you have it there so you can post it again, Chairman? Or... Um... I don't even remember what. Can you find it? I can. I can find it. Yes. Four big paragraphs. Can you even see that far up in the chat? No, I think you need to repost it. Thank you, Tatsoni. Welcome. To the, to the channel. Yeah, and I think tomorrow we'll be, uh, we'll be going through the game. We'll be going through the game faster because I think you guys had a lot of questions initially. They start to get fewer and fewer. So let's see. Here we have the new mess, the new qu the, the question again. The one I promised I'll try, and I haven't even read it. Uh, let's see. <laughs> it's like, is this your diary we're reading? Uh, okay. If you don't, so, Col Cos Chairman says, if you don't mind, I'd like to continue with my previous line of questioning about the creative process behind the game in its early stages. Before you went on with your breathtaking speech about buckets. <laughs> You did mention that there were long discussions about figuring out the core of the game itself. Long story short, my question is, I did have a suspicion that the whole concept behind the bunker sprang from ideas the team could not realize with Rebirth. 
for example, from the super secret follower of Rebirth, I do remember that there was at least talks and concepts about the whole surviving aspect of the desert, where there were resources like water flasks, concepts of the same locations in the light of day and in the grim of night, where there would be monsters appearing and stuff like that, which kind of overlaps with the idea of bunker, where you are able to stockpile your resources and prepare for the lights going out. Also, the previously mentioned sand lurker also seems like we could be part of that, could, would be part of that. I did put the pieces of the idea of this kind of uh, survival together even before the bunker was announced so I re so it really seemed like some kind of foreshadowing of ideas the team was very eager about could not implement it reverse so in a way bunker does seem to do literally everything that rebirth was able to in terms of horror and game mechanics almost like an emphasis emphasis to rebirth did you happen to think of it this way or is this just my wild imagination and schizo theories and the idea for the bunker was its own thing from the beginning answer is yes okay thanks for today guys um no. <laughs> uh, i couldn't help myself uh <laughs> Uh, no, uh, you are right in, uh, I mean, you're, you're right in a way. We've been talking about this as well with the ghouls. We wanted the ghouls to come out of holes and in of holes and have more uh, uh, emergent or like dynamic gameplay with an AI for the ghouls. And the same goes for the, for the, uh, the, the desert. We wanted to have more mechanics in the desert and you're absolutely right in what you've said that we had water flasks, we had day and night time, we had the sand lurk and all of these things. But in a way I don't think that bunker was... there was things with bunker that I felt like, okay, we felt like that there are certain aspects of, of rebirth, for example, uh, like the linearity of it the flashbacks and those kind of things and just would be refreshing to make a game where it's much more open much more we reuse those dynamic ideas we had of a dynamic uh, monster encounters and those kind of things so yes it's definitely things that came out of rebirth that but uh, that that boiled into bunker and bunker can see that can see it as an effect of that but um, not like all of the ideas we didn't get to do in in rebirth got into bunker that's not the case and rebirth is about the the story it's more about tassi's journey than it is about the player's journey uh, in a way i would say but of course the player is there for it and we want to attach and latch the player onto tassi but uh, but it is like for example all of the many of the moments that we encounter now during this gameplay would be the similar to what you would encounter if you play the game yourself we would have similar moments whereas if you play bunker that's what i mean it's more the player's journey we would share war stories from the bunker that are quite different from each other and how what happened at this point at that point whereas here it's like okay do you remember that scene yes i remember that scene. so it's different types of games and uh, and in a way, maybe we had those ideas of these kind of mechanics, but couldn't really fulfill them because the story, the narrative is there and it, it should shine. And with the pregnancy, with all of those things, that was the focus for the game. And those kind of mechanics and dynamic um, encounters and stuff like that would interact, would kind of rule, like, uh, what do you say? It would conflict with the story and the narrative too much to, to introduce them. Okay, um, I hope that was uh, uh, a uh, long enough answer for you. Um, <laughs> uh, what are you saying? Uh, oh, okay, I shouldn't read out all of these comments. Now we're starting to get into the dodgy comments from certain Discord members. Um, but thank you guys. So I think uh, this was part one 
tomorrow we'll continue part two at the same time as we started this one so that's one o'clock 1 p.m central european time and uh, that's also then just see if i 4 a.m pst time um so let's continue tomorrow thank you so much this was a fantastic stream so many people joining in i'm over the moon i think oscar is as well and uh, absolutely fantastic we'll uh, hope hope we can continue this tomorrow and uh, thank you sing mode activated no 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 not for these streams okay guys have a nice evening or day or wherever you are and see you tomorrow bye